Manchester Orchestra, Million Masks of God, album review. Let's chat about it. Hey guys, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning, here to chat about this latest from Atlanta-based band, Manchester Orchestra. They've been at it for years. They are modern darlings. I mean, people love them. People go crazy for them. And for the longest time, just did not sit well with me. I didn't get this band. Early albums like I'm Like a Virgin Losing Their Child and Mean Everything to Nothing. I don't know. These were okay. People ranted and raved about these albums. I thought the blended tracks of folk and emo here, I thought those were pretty good, but some of the slower moments just weren't for me. However, I will say this. One thing that I have never questioned about Manchester Orchestra is their passion. While I wasn't personally into some of the tracks on their first few albums, I thought the performances more than often were electric. I had a lot of the same feelings towards 2011 Simple Math, too. It was fine, but I did think the April Fool's single was pretty good. But it's always bothered me that I just can't dive headfirst into this band. So many people can. So many people love just about everything this band has ever put out. <laughs> However, uh, I know I'm in the minority here, but if I'm being honest, the last few projects that Manchester Orchestra has dropped have been some of my favorites in their discography. Cope was a little bit more direct. It didn't show them blending so many genres, trying so many different things. But in its place, they were writing some of their punchiest, catchiest, and most direct tunes to date. And 2017's A Black Mile to the Surface was their grittiest and most cinematic album to date. Now, I'm going to say this right now. This review was supposed to come out last week, but I ended up losing my notes for it. But originally, I was just going to kind of write it off, push it off. But my love for this new album has just grown to a level that I really wasn't expecting it to. So I rewrote them. It's a few days late, but I definitely want to chat about this new album because I think it's fantastic. This album starts off with Inaudible, and right off the bat, this is freaking gorgeous. These harmonies are just so warm and welcoming and wonderfully textured. This is so far from where Manchester Orchestra started their career years ago, but I salute that. I love how epic and grandiose and immersive and vast this track is, and I can say that about so much of this album. And the passion here. My God, I don't know where any of this came from, but I'm so glad that it's here right now. On the other hand, Angel of Death is just so freaking cool. It's not as airy. It has a little bit of a, a heavier riff to it, but it also has this feel to it that is just larger than life. And yes, it's going to come off a little full of itself to some. And if you swear by their early blend of pop punk and folk and emo and more, this is a far cry from that. But one thing rings true here, and it's something that's always sort of been obvious to me in Manchester Orchestra's music, even though I haven't, you know, loved their discography as others do. Like I said earlier, the performances here and the passion here is certainly commendable. This is just as vast, just as in-depth and cinematic. And between the soaring vocals and the intense drumming here, I just want to listen to this track again and again and again. On the other hand, kill timing took me a whole lot longer to really get into. I mean, sitting, listening to this track in the early stages of this album, hearing this strong bass group and these synths, it really took me a little while to cozy up to. But it's a very solid change of pace, and the vocals continue to be pretty stunning. They're just so fiery and so passionate. Behind all of them, we have this thunderous instrumental. It is pretty awe-inspiring. And Bedhead is just a great single all around. It has captivated me since the first time I heard it. So much of this album is just a great contrast between these very intense, quiet storm sort of instrumentals and these soaring vocals. And it works so well. Tracks like this are just such a great anthem for the band. It's thunderous, it's emotional, it's well-performed, and this is just all around one of my favorite rock singles of the year. And I love how mysterious and whimsical Annie is. With how vast and cinematic this album can be at times, I really do have to take a second just to commend the simplicity of it at times. It's all so obvious, but more often than not, that also makes you really hone in on a lot of other details that really, really just warm my heart. Yeah, I may be in the minority here, but I think this is Manchester Orchestra's biggest and best album. Most of this album is wonderful. I love it. Obstacle, for me, though, doesn't really work. It's easily my least favorite track of the bunch. Between the very quiet vocals and this off-kilter instrumental, honestly, this one clashes really bad. 
This is the first track here that I haven't heard and just had to sit back in awe and just take it all in. And sadly, the internet isn't the powerful, larger-than-life finale that I hoped we were going to get. This is one of the most atmospheric and quiet tracks here, but that's not the issue. In an album that is just filled to the brim with passionate, explosive performances that are just so wildly vast and detail-oriented, this sounds like an afterthought. But outside of that, I, I may be in the minority here, but this album is just one of my favorite things I've heard all year. Telepath, on the other hand, is just so warm and cozy, and it's just such a great, tender, beautiful ballad. And you know what? In the past, this has been a real downfall for me with Manchester Orchestra. But this is just so passionate. Let It Storm, on the other hand, is also super warm, super easy to take in. Like I said, the amount of passion in these songs here continues to be just nothing short of commendable. But there is just a level of cinematic detail and a vastness to this album that I have never heard from Manchester Orchestra. This practically has some Fleet Foxes vibes to it. And I love the sense of finality to Dinosaur. It is dead quiet. The vocals are super intense. The way it builds up, we get this great sense of mystery here, and then it just explodes as a finale. It's so simple, but it's so effective, and it almost reminds me of like what I loved about the last Lot of Spewed album. And way back, I love how rustic and warm this is. And just when I thought the finale tracks of this album needed a little bit more progression, this one opens up warmly, has such great melodies to it, and I don't know, I don't know why I love this track and most of this album as much as I do, but it just makes me feel good. And I wasn't expecting to love this album, and I really, really do. So look, this is far from being their most stylistically diverse album. This isn't their heaviest effort to date either. But Manchester Orchestra, make up for that with a slew of what I think is their most passionate and electric performances in years. And that is saying something, because that is one thing that I've always commended the band on. But this, this is epic and grandiose and vast and cinematic and has great production. It shows them taking some real risks. It is fantastic. I personally think this is just a really great feast of indie rock and folk rock and emo and so many other things. I'm loving this thing. I'm feeling a light nine on this album, but let me know what you guys think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, guys.